Now, Homer, this is a new body fat analysis test. I start you jiggling and measure how long it takes to stop. Woohoo! Look at that blubber fly! Yes. Nurse, cancel my one o'clock. Body fat. A buzzword in the fitness space. An obsession for many. And an extremely misunderstood beast. You would get down to how much, what percent body fat? I was 0.33. 0.33? What does I that wanna... mean? <laughs> when I had the, the 3.33 was, was uh, dipped under water. Wow. It was negative numbers. <laughs> it was minus two. That doesn't even make sense. Mm. Body composition is one of the pillars of fitness, and body fat happens to be a practical means of determining this facet of health and wellness. And of course we know that being overweight or obese is not healthy, but is it healthy to maintain a vein-laden six-pack for an extended period of time? Let's talk about it. From skin fold calipers to hydrostatic weighing, dipped on the water. There are many tools that can assess the amount of fat that a person is carrying, but of course, there is only one ideal option. Next this is the holy grail of body fat testing. No, it's not. My freaking eyeballs are the holy grail of freaking body fat testing. I did a consult with the great Coach Greg Doucette, and he was kind enough to use his laser eye vision to determine my leanest level of body fat. Well, I have actually laser vision in terms of assessing people's body fat. And after talking to Greg, I just gotta say that he is truly a genuine and caring human being. But unfortunately, the audio was not picked up by my screen recorder app that I used for the body fat section that I recorded. So I will summarize. My leanest body fat was estimated to be somewhere around 7%, fluctuating a little bit above or below that number at various points. Apparently, near contest ready. With a stubborn mind, I managed to maintain this shape for about an entire year. And Greg also made a point to roast my legs in a very professional and objective way, stating that the level of mass in my legs was dwarfed by my upper body, but my body fat was still low enough to where you could see some separation in my legs. Now this is an important note because the amount of cardio I was doing to achieve this level of body fat definitely hindered my leg days, which were already suboptimal with programming, especially when it came to long distance running. This very likely hindered my progress in terms of my leg gains. Now prior to discovering Coach Greg's preachings and teachings, I was one of the many who fell victim to the bulking and cutting philosophy. I essentially accepted that there would be periods of my life where I would intentionally reach unhealthy levels of body fat in order to efficiently put on muscle. Did he eat to bulk? Nope, you don't eat to bulk. Main gain is what Coach Greg says. You can eat a tiny little bit of extra calories if you want, but really it's negligible. Thankfully though, I was snapped out of this dogma and I replaced it with something far more reasonable. And the fact is that bulking is just an excuse to be lazy on your diet See how much you can improve your bench, and see how much unrestricted, low-quality weight you can slap on your body. You see, bulking was never fun for me. I mean, sure, just like everyone else, I love to eat, but I also enjoy being healthy, as well as being able to enjoy my hard work instead of purposefully covering my muscles up with fat. Especially when I was a theme park performer who spent the vast majority of his time half naked. There was definitely a lot of pressure to look a certain way, both for myself as well as my peers and former profession. Two very important revelations occurred in my later fitness journey. One which was already mentioned was the fact that bulking and cutting was a myth. Maintaining a healthier level of body fat is perfectly reasonable for muscular hypertrophy. The other was that the only way to lose fat was by being in a calorie deficit. Now it may sound crazy, but up until Coach Greg hit it big on YouTube, fad diets were still being heavily promoted over the Seco truth. And I unfortunately drank the Kool-Aid. Keto, intermittent fasting, carnivore, veganism, and so on are all useless for fat loss, unless you are in a calorie deficit. The first thing you look for when you're looking for a YouTuber to listen to, a coach, or anyone, the number one thing they need to understand is that it's calories in, calories out that decides if you lose weight or not. Embracing calories in versus calories out put me in control. This newfound sense of control based on these two revelations were crucial for my fitness journey. I felt as though I had cracked the code, so to speak. Like many people, particularly those with fitness aspirations, body image was something that I've been struggling with for some time. But now I knew without a doubt how to achieve the physique that I was striving for. But there was a new problem. Now that I had this sense of control, I took things a little bit too far and for a little bit too long. Because if I didn't have muscle pressing directly against my skin, I felt inadequate, or even kind of fat, which is of course a classic sign of body dysmorphia, as well as a sign of a lack of true confidence. But as usual, this was put on the back burner because remember, now I was in control.
Towards the beginning of 2020, I was in the middle of performing for the Mardi Gras event at Universal Studios Orlando, right before things were cut short as the world slipped into madness. Now unemployed and struggling to find a job, I essentially spent the rest of the year constantly working out. Every day would be lined with activity from sunrise to sunset, and the gaps were filled in with a lot of eating. I would lift weights and do a ton of cardio. For the most part, I did enjoy the workout volume, but I wasn't necessarily training on that level strictly for the enjoyment that fitness brings. I was also doing it to combat the amount of food I was eating while in lockdown. Now, thankfully, I have the anabolic cookbook, I'm a freaking cookbook to help me keep my meals high in volume and low in calories. Protein ice cream, bitch. I ain't falling out of there. Upside down, DQ style. When I'm eating this all to myself. But I was still ravenous at basically any moment where I was not training. I've eaten on Greg's cookbook before there was a cookbook, and all of my meals were damn delicious. Trust me on that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't freaking matter. As soon as you get to those levels of those single digit body fat numbers that go lower and lower and lower, shit gets harder and harder and harder. And to go along with that, I was regularly very cold, which is a side effect of having low body fat that not many discuss. And my sex drive was also a bit lower, and my gym performance, particularly in terms of weights, did begin to suffer. The fitness industry promotes a ton of garbage, unfortunately. Phony diets. Hey, so you're interested in starting intermittent fasting. Phony products. This is a hard workout. This is the future of health and fitness. And phony advice. I'm going to help you to build bigger arms, guaranteed. By the time these 22 days are over, your biceps and triceps size are going to be much more significant than they are right now. All in an industry that deals directly with people's health. Most companies are just looking to make money. And one very large misconception seems to be that the lower the body fat, the healthier and more fit the individual. You know, now they can't, they can't take the hunger. They can't suffer that much. Man, I'm suffering all the time for this shape. And of course, to some extent, this is true, but only to a point. One's individual capabilities as far as how well they're able to maintain a certain level of leanness will come down to a series of factors. One of the biggest being genetics. To discourage the pursuit of low body fat is not necessarily what I'm doing here, but be realistic. Unfortunately, the fitness industry throws a lot of unrealistic expectations at us, which is precisely why it is so important that you know how to navigate the fitness space. The fitness industry can be defined as a never-ending tribal warfare of idiots. I'm going to be breaking down the psychology of each tribe and explaining to you guys why this entire group of muscle-bound, glycogen-soaked troglodytes is already dead. How worth it is it for you to be exceptionally lean? Can you handle the workload, the hunger, all the potential side effects? Oh, you get a few side effects. And those ears? Oh, not so loud. Isn't 12% body fat good enough? Why does it have to be six? I regularly get DMs on Instagram that ask for advice on how to get shredded. But if your main objective is to be shredded, it may be time to reevaluate your goals. Of course, it's great to have body composition or performance-based aspirations but not at the expense of your mental health or overall well-being. Do what makes you happy, but don't let it consume you. You are more than just the weights you lift. You are more than just a body. There's something called a brain. It's what's on the inside that counts, yes. What's on the outside, it counts to get you in the door. If you don't have anything on the inside once you open that door, what's the use of it? It may take some time to determine, but my advice is to find that sweet spot where you are comfortable both physically and mentally. And that's where I'm at now. I'm no longer killing myself for maximum vascularity. And that's fine. Extremes in any direction can be harmful. And fitness is not about being as lean as humanly possible. Fitness is about health, vitality, and enjoying the process. I'm currently trying to main gain at around 12 to 14% body fat or so. Not quite as lean as before, but still lean and far more content overall. And I'm now comfortable with how I look, as well as how I perform and how I feel. And you know what? That's real control, my friends. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please let me know down in the comments section below. Maybe hit that like and subscribe on your way. Thanks again. Hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye bye